Hello and blessings beautiful souls, Sarava and Ashe to you. How are you doing today? It's so nice to be looking into your beautiful smiling faces. I recently got a question pertaining to what Sarava and Ashe mean and so I thought I would quickly explain that. Sarava is a traditional term used between Candomblé and Umbanda and it means good luck, prosperity, blessings, things of that nature. So it's a really prosperous word. Ashe is linked to chi and ki and life force and prana and arwen things of that nature so sarava and ashe are blessings to you of good fortune good energy good luck beautiful energy flowing through you each and every day that is how I start my videos and I thought that I would just quickly explain that because I have been asked a number of times. Okay, so I thought that it was worth mentioning to you and I apologize for not mentioning it sooner that I began this week filming with the DJI Osmo Pocket and if you watch that big reveal vlog that I did pertaining to the fact that we will be interviewing Mary Kate Greer and Rachel Pollock on Spread This Witches early uh, April, link will be again in the description box below. After that video, I noticed a huge amount of issues with the footage, the clarity of the footage, and the sound, and other weird things were happening to that footage. And so I put that camera away for the time being, and I jumped back to the Canon G7X Mark II because I had such a fun time using it last week. I started to get really, really used to it. So I just thought I'll finish off the week with this camera and then I'll determine what camera I should use next week. And that camera will probably be my new Sony A6400, which is exactly the camera that I bought the other day. And I mentioned that I did something naughty and I would tell you, and that's what I did. That's what I did. So just know, that I'm filming with this particular Canon G7X right now and I have been for the week and people have been complimenting me on my new camera and I feel bad having not mentioned that sooner. I just thought, oh, I better mention that. I better get to that. And each and every time I did a vlog, I just completely forgot to mention it because it was just so natural for me to be holding the Canon. I was so used to working with the Canon that each and every time I grabbed it, I just didn't even think, oh, I better update people. So there you have it. But now let's go to that unboxing. Okay, so I I have here the moon box for I believe it's March I think it's March's moon box because I am one month behind at the moment and the new moon box arrived this week now this one was also opened by border control and everything looks to be in good working order if that makes sense so I'm just because of the nature of that ugh, that opening from border I decided that I would just cleanse it a little bit with uh, with some sage. Uh, this is just more for me than it is for anything else, simply because I believe that the magical items inside this box repel the types of energy that I am concerned with, but it never hurts to be thorough, if that makes sense. And so because it was kind of opened and in, in such a way, and what I mean by that is that those who opened it did not open it with any kind of sacred intention. I'm going to hit it now with some Paolo Santo. And I had this thought when I opened one of the boxes last, last week, I believe it was, and it had been opened and I did mention that I was okay with having it open and I still am perfectly fine with having it open, but I still believe that such items deserve respectful dealings and you know care and consideration and I'm not saying that they're thoughtless in their opening they don't pillage but it's still something that I feel a little bit weird about if that makes sense and so particularly because I use items in here for ritual so I was just standing up and now I'm going to sit down because we're doing this we're opening it Ooh, okay so we have the letter and we have, ooh, check that out. Can you see that? Thoth, the glare is insane, I know. So let's have a look. Egyptian magic, that's all I need to know for the moment. Okay, woohoo! 
I am all I need to be successful. Oh, I do believe these are Ethany's cards. I think these are her money manifestation cards. If you don't know Ethany, she is a gem. I usually teach tarot uh, classes through her Tarot Readers Academy and uh, through Tarot Summer School. So yay, look at that. I'm so stoked that she was included in here. Thanks Moonbox for supporting our beautiful creators. Okay, so we have here, this looks like juniper berries, but uh, we'll see what that, oh, this is bay. Bay, juniper berry. Oh, here's the oil. No, I can't do this. I can't open it blind like that. I've seen other people do that and I'm just like, that's just no. Oh, there's some things in here, folks. I'm ruining a surprise for myself. Wow. Okay, we have here my cat herb, also known as clove, which should be in here some, aha, uh -huh, clove. There we go. And then we have bay bark, also known as bay leaf, which we have here. And then we have bashi bark, which is this one here, also known as allspice. I was wrong, it's not juniper. Actually, I have juniper in jars. I should have known that juniper's a bit bigger. You know what? This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take everything out of the box to make it super easy, and then we're gonna go in and have a look at each and every one, yeah? items laid out beautifully each one more beautiful than the other take a look at this one a whole book on Egyptian prosperity magic and it's such a beautiful looking book published by Llewellyn Claudia R. Dillaray may the fire within your soul burn bright with curiosity and hunger for knowledge we send you the energy of abundance and prosperity on your sacred journey Bless, blessed be the witch's moon. Beautiful. Look at this. Oh, wow. This is very, very interesting. Oh my goodness. If you are at all interested in Egyptian magic, full stop Egyptian deity, and you are interested in having a gentle introduction, and I use the term gentle loosely, then you may find this one of particular benefit. Now, I haven't cross-referenced the nature of this information, but it looks good just from the get-go. And just holding it like this in my hand makes me feel quite, uh, you know, quite happy with it in that way. Egyptian magic is not my forte, mind you, and so I'm always learning and I'm happy to learn. That sits well with me, if that makes sense. So we have this beautiful candle here, but let's let's just go through the, the things, shall we? Okay, so as per usual, we have the parchment paper. So let's just take that out of the way. And you would be surprised how often I use these pieces of parchment. You would be very, very surprised. All right, so here we go. Limited edition Egyptian prosperity magic book by Claudia. Delaware, ah, uh, Delaware. We are so excited to be able to include a custom copy of the Egyptian prosperity magic spells and recipes for financial empowerment book. In this collection, these specific books are the only hardcover gold foil copies that exist, created exclusively for the witch's moon. So that's amazing. That is so amazing. So it's a, oh wow, it's a custom book. That is so awesome. I really love that. Then we have here an inscribed resin ankh plaque. So that is this beautiful thing right here. And look at it. It is resin. It is inscribed with hieroglyphs. I would love to know what these hieroglyphs are. Uh, this symbolic ankh plaque has been hand casted using real crushed stone bonded with high quality designer resin. Each piece has been individually hand painted by a group of practiced artisans. This very sacred symbol has been used in many traditions and has been revered as the most powerful tool or key in ancient Egypt. Beautiful. 
We have a hand rolled Lady of Sycamore Spell Candle. That's this stunning green here. Can we just look at this green? This green is going to look so good in that candle holder. I love this vibrant color. Oh, yes. I'm such a green person in that way. Not in a Martian-esque way, but in a lover of green. Right. Then we have uh, Renewmit. Ren... Renewmit. I can't pronounce that, folks. Magical anointing oil. Let's have a little sniffsies of this. Ooh, that smells spicy. It smells super spicy. What does it do? It's a goddess oil that is kept close to Egyptian magicians and witches as she brings with her protection, prosperity, abundance, and good fortune. You can go over there then. <laughs> Moving on to the next page here, we have Imolk Sacred Salt. Ooh, that is so yummy. That is so, so yummy. That's so fresh and enlivening. Oh, it's so pretty. It smells so good. Then we have rough Sumatrian green jade. Shut your face. I knew this stone had some, oh, and it just like, yes, hold me like this. Yes, I will hold you like this. Rough Sumatrian green jade. I'm a huge fan of jade. Huge, huge fan of it. You can stay here on my Altar. Yes, you can. And then we have Egyptian offering incense. That is this one here, which we'll have a snippety sniff of. Ooh, very nice. And then we've gone through the barks already. So that's three barks. Personalized oracle reading. We have, oh, look. And they are the money manifestation cards by Ethany. And then we have the book of Thoth artwork over here. So all in all, a super beautiful, magical Egyptian theme to really help you connect with prosperity in quite a unique way. Now, oftentimes when we are urged or encouraged or inspired even is perhaps the best word to work prosperity magic. Seldom do we look at other cultures and how they do that. We tend to gravitate towards the things that we know, the cultures that we are comfortable with. But I always believe that by stepping out of your comfort zone, especially from a magical perspective, you increase your wisdom, you open up your capacity for acceptance and you also get to look at a particular common practice in a very different perspective. Now, as someone who doesn't regularly work with the Egyptian pantheon, I think that it would be in my best interest to work subtly with this kit and to see what kind of wisdom it brings me and how I can apply that wisdom in my everyday practice. And so I know that there are many, many practitioners of the craft out there who really jive with Egyptian mysticism, Egyptian magic, and all of that beauty. But I have never really been called in that direction. And so I'm constantly skirting around it, if that makes sense. And as a result of that, I am missing out on seeing things from a different perspective, one that can be quite inspiring. Whenever I open the Egyptian door, as I call it, I always learn something critical and essential to my own personal practice and I can get from that pantheon, that practice, that culture, such illumination that can be directly applied to my practice. So there we have it. That is the beautiful witch's moon box for, I believe it was March. Yes, I believe it was March. So I'm going to be doing some witchy moon unboxings this week coming forth and that this is during the waxing phase of our moon. It is new today and by the way I am doing this witch's moon unboxing during the astrological hour of the sun and it makes me feel radiant as I'm doing so. And with all of that said, can we just go Ooh, at all of these beautiful things because I'm always so blown away with how the witch's moon can manage to pull this type of uniqueness and beauty off. Like they really do stand out. <sighs> I oftentimes uh, 
comically say that the witch's moon are the Chanel of witch's subscription box or pagan subscription box or magical subscription boxes. And so beautiful souls, I hope that you enjoy this one and I know that I'm going to have such a beautiful time working with these exquisite tools. So rather than switch cameras and do all that fun stuff, because I've got to start building a curry now for a dinner party that I'm attending, I wanted to say I'm wishing you so much love, luck, peace and joy. Thank you for hanging out with me today. It's already been an amazing day and I can just see the day getting more and more amazing as the hours go by. So thank you for sharing space with me in this way. I hope you've enjoyed this Witch's Moon unboxings. As per usual, I'll be leaving the link to the Witch's moon in the description box below and have an amazing day and don't forget if you have liked this video please do give it a thumbs up comment below are you into Egyptian magic have you like me ever skirted around Egyptian magic does Egyptian magic like feel like a soul calling and you know answer me those questions because I'm always interested to see where people's interests lie so there you have it beautiful souls I will talk to you tomorrow Mwah.